In this example, we're given a piecewise defined function, and we're asked to find out um, at each one of the breakpoints. We're using the terminology breakpoints to indicate breaks in the domain. Um, we want to figure out what's happening at the breakpoints. Is the function continuous at a breakpoint? If so, that's awesome. If not, we want to figure out um, more information about the type of discontinuity. So if it's not continuous, we want the type of discontinuity as well as any one-sided continuity that we would have at a place of discontinuity. So looking at this piecewise defined function, what we have is breakpoints or the breaks in the domain. So looking at the intervals of where the x's are defined, we see that the top piece is defined wherever x is less than 1, and then we carry on to the middle piece for values between 1 and 2, and the bottom piece for x values bigger than 2. And so the two breakpoints, the breaks in the domain, happen to be x equals 1 and x equals 2. So we'll take these one at a time. So let's look and see what's happening at x equals 1. Uh, to determine whether we have a, a function continuous or not, as well as really information for the discontinuity, uh, if it happens to be not continuous, we need to assess what's happening for three things. We need the left-hand limit, so that would be the limit as x approaches uh, 1 from the left-hand side. We need to know what that is. We need to know the right-hand limit, the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side. And we need to know the function value at 1. Okay, Those three things, depending on what they are, allow us to make our conclusions. So the left-hand limit is um, assessing what's happening at values of x slightly less than 1, and that would be for the top piece, because that's where um, the interval x less than 1 would include values of x less than 1, which is the left-hand side limit values, or input values. So we would have uh, the limit, whoops, I don't want to do f there, I want to specify that I'm looking at the top piece there. Um, and what I would get then is... Uh, really, it would end up being plugging in. We haven't really told you how to algebraically compute limits yet, but those values are what you get when you plug in, because imagine what you're doing is really trying to figure out, if you were to graph this, where you would put that hole for the endpoint there. And you get the y value by plugging in um, into the y equals x plus 1 um, to figure out what the y value would be. So that would be the left-hand limit. Uh, the right-hand limit, we've got to look for the interval of value sl x value slightly bigger than 1, and that would happen in the middle piece. So that would be the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of that middle piece, which is 3x minus 1. Again, we can go ahead and uh, plug in because that's how, that's how we would be computing where to um, switch over if we were to uh, be graphing this. So 3 times 1 is 1, minus 1 is 2. So, so far we see that those two pieces are matching. And now notice for the function value, we see uh, the interval 1 less than or equal to x being part of that middle piece. And so the or equal to part attached to the 1 there for the middle piece is telling me I plug that value into the middle piece. So it would be 3 times 1 minus 1. There it would be 2. Now notice that all of these things are equal. All three are equal is telling me it's continuous at x equals 2, or sorry, at x equals 1, okay? So, so far that's part of our answer. That's one breakpoint. The other breakpoint would be um, at x is equal to a 2. That would be the other break in the domain. And so we just repeat this process um, where now we're looking at the left-hand limit at 2, then we'd be looking at the right-hand limit at 2, as well as the function value at 2. Okay, so the left-hand limit, uh, we go and we look at the intervals of x values. Those that would include values slightly less than 2 would be in the middle uh, piece. So that would be limit as x approaches 2 from the left of this middle piece, 3x minus 1. And again, we get that by plugging in. And so we'd have 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1 is 5. Um, for the right-hand limit, we've got to drop down to that uh, bottom piece of our piecewise defined function because values of x slightly bigger than 2 uh, correspond, to the, um, correspond to the bottom piece, which is the x plus 2 piece. We can get that value by plugging in, like we've mentioned before, and when we do, we get the value 4. 
And then lastly, for our function value, we go back up to our intervals and we see the x uh, greater than or equal to, the or equal to part is what we're focused on here. The or equal to two is telling me that to get f of two, I've got to go plug in to the bottom piece. So that would be your two plus two is equal to four. So now to be able to assess what we have, we see that the five, four, and four, not all of them are the same. So the fact that they're not all the same is telling me that I have a discontinuity there. So it's discontinuous at uh, x is equal to two. Since it's discontinuous, we now need to know the type of discontinuity in any one-sided um, continuity. Well, looking at Ooh, that was not a good thing. Let's try this again. There you go. Looking at the two one-sided limits, we see that the two one-sided limits are both finite, but they're not equal to each other. So the fact that they're both finite, not equal to each other, is telling me it's a jump discontinuity. And then uh, for one-sided continuity, we first got to look at the function value. Well, the function value is equal to four. Um, and that four is equal to the um, limit as we are coming in from the right because of the little plus sign. So these two being equal is saying that it's right continuous because the function value is equal to the right-hand limit. And so that would be what's happening at the other breakpoint.